in that first year, I was living in working in New York City. That first major thing happened in the first year of my martial arts training, which was beautiful sunny Tuesday morning, wake up, go to work, three blocks south of the World Trade Center. And next thing you know, there's black smoke coming out of the towers. You know, I made the three blocks over to my workspace, went into the to the lobby to make a phone call and the first tower fell. So the first time that I felt like this intense fear, that paralyzation of fear happened on that morning. And to make a long story short, I made it out of there, obviously, and made it to my martial arts school. That was like the first place I I made it to that morning where I just felt a sense of safety and refuge and peace for the first time that day, which became the metaphor for my my life. <laughs> Welcome to Start With A Win, where we give you the tools and lessons you need to create business and personal success. Are you ready? Let's do this. Coming to you from Brand Viva Media Headquarters. Hey, start with a win, studio. Uh, here we go. Producer Mark, how you doing, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. Thank awesome. you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, I'm excited for today's guests. I think uh, we're going to have a great conversation and, and learn a lot. I want to introduce to you guys Jen Cassetta. Uh, she is a nationally recognized speaker, empowerment coach, and self-defense expert, let's go, equipped uh, with her third degree black belt in Hapkido, a master's degree in nutrition and health coaching certification. She develops programming that helps people feel strong, safe, and powerful from the streets to the bedroom. Damn. <laughs> I, I don't know. Boardroom. <laughs> oh, I mean, boardroom. <laughs> There's a typo on here. Uh, <laughs> wow. There's a new book for you, Jen. That's right. Yep. Feel wow. powerful from the streets to the bedroom. Hey, you got to be powerful. We want to feel both powerful everywhere. Right, okay. That's right. Right. Well, I mean, Jen's a badass. Jen, and welcome to is, the show. That's all we have to say. This is a, 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 <laughs> awkward. Thank you for I always like to you know, start the show <laughs> off with it. It loosens everybody up and it gets an authentic conversation going. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> All right. <Wonderful>. So, uh, <laughs> All right. Well, Jen, um, you and I have a lot in common. This is going to be a fun conversation. I mean, it's uh, I started my time in the real estate space uh, teaching personal safety, real estate agent safety, a program called SAFER, Safety Awareness for Every Realtor. This, uh, this will be a lot of fun. But really what I want to talk about more than anything is your empowerment. This is going to be a good conversation. So first of all, Let's, let's dig into who's Jen. Tell me your story and how you got to where you are today. For sure, Adam. And yes, I feel like we do have a lot in common. Different. I never became CEO of a major <laughs> company, but, um, but the path is kind of similar. 22 years ago, I stepped onto a mat in a dojong for the first time, and I fell madly in love. <clears throat> it was never a planned path or you know, I want to become a public speaker one day. That never was the plan. Um, but martial arts just captivated me. And in that first year, I was living and working in New York City. Just a couple of things happened to a lot of people. Um, and I was involved and it changed the course of my life forever. Uh, that that first major thing happened in the first year of my martial arts training, which was beautiful sunny Tuesday morning, wake up, go to work, three blocks south of the World Trade Center. And um, next thing you know, you know, there's, I get out of the subway at Wall Street, there's black smoke coming out of the towers. I made myself, you know, I made the three blocks over to my workspace, went in to make a phone call, went into the, to the lobby to make a phone call and the first tower fell. So the first time that I felt like this intense fear, um, that paralyzation of fear, which now I get to teach, um, happened on that morning. Um, and to make a long story short, I made it out of there, obviously, and made it to my martial arts school. Um, that was like the first place I, I made it to that morning where I just felt a, a sense of safety and refuge and, and peace for the first time that day, which became the metaphor for my my life. <laughs> yeah, well, in the days, weeks, months following, obviously I had like serious PTSD, the sound of garbage trucks or planes flying overhead had me in like 
full mode panic attack. And, um, but all I wanted to do was go back to the dojo and train. And that's where I started to feel, you know, my body actually physically getting stronger from all the conditioning. Mentally, I started to feel more confident, learning these life-saving skills. Um, spiritually, with all the meditation and breathing techniques, I started to feel more grounded. So looking back, I didn't realize it at the time, obviously. And I think that's the key with all of our life stories, everyone out there listening you look back and you can connect the dots and I can look back and see how that training truly changed my life. It changed my career path. It changed um, me on a cellular level. It made me feel safe again. So how did you come to this awareness? I mean, it, it was it just over time and training. And then at some point you're looking back going, I'm evolving here. What can we look for to, to help ourselves recognize a trauma and a move forward point, things like that. Well, it's funny. Um, there's a quick story of how I figured out what those dots were for me. And then there's a part in my book that I actually help people walk through that in the first chapter. Because I think it's so important in any self-development course or book you read or, or journey that you're on, we really do have to look back before we go forward. So let me ask you this then, because really you're you're talking about turning this tragedy into empowerment. And um, there, there are a lot of people that have faced a lot of tragedy in different aspects of life. Like, take, just take the last couple of years. Some people have had a horrible time with COVID. You know, obviously some people lost their lives. Some people have had this ongoing illness or whatever it might be. Um, there are a lot of people that have an opportunity to be a badass now out of this. What What is your read on what are you seeing from your expertise in the challenges that people have gone through compared to what they're turning those into now? Yeah, well, so interesting because uh, the second chapter, your questions are literally like <laughs> going right in, right in order, and this was I not intentional. I have not read the book. It's not uh, out yet. <laughs> Well, so each chapter is a belt level, like a, a metaphor for martial arts. So white belt was embrace the suck. Yellow belt is about bouncing back. And the the strategies that I learned on the mat in a dojo, when you get knocked down, right? Um, the one of the first things you learn in martial arts is how to fall and get back up with velocity. So you don't wind up staying down there for too long. So Obviously, that metaphor is for life. So three ways that we can either get back up quickly or avoid the takedown altogether are the pivot, which we all have heard ad nauseum the last two years. And so many people have mastered the pivot. The next is when life kind of gives you that series, like you were kind of referring to of getting knocked down over and over and over again. We learn to roll and trust the momentum of that roll when you go backwards to get right back up on your feet again each time. So using the momentum of each knockdown to get back up. And then the third is if like life completely knocks you out, um, then sometimes there's only the chance for an ultimate comeback like Rocky Balboa or Madonna. Like, right, <laughs> completely recreating yourself and and thinking outside of the box and coming up with a plan and and taking steps to do that. I mean, why did you write this? What what brought you to wanting to write a book about badassery <laughs> and these techniques? Um, after 22 years of teaching um, all kinds of things from health coaching, but really, really the thing that I feel like I'm most passionate about is the self defense and the safety um, and realizing that the self-defense and everything that I learned from learning self-defense was so much less about the kicks and the punches and the elbows and the knees. And it's really about that empowerment piece. So after hearing, like I said, after two decades, women coming to me and sharing their stories of being harassed, assaulted, abused, taken advantage of, manipulated, I finally just said enough already. I want to create something that I can get into the hands of many, many people um, that will just give them the tools to, to do that, to stand up for themselves. And then we stand up for others as well. Wow. Okay. I want to uh, jump ahead to becoming a black belt. Okay. You have, you have a chapter about becoming a black belt in leadership, right? T yeah. Tell me, T tell us more about that. Um, you know, what have you learned throughout your career about becoming a better leader and, and how does that tie into the, the black belt analogy? 
Absolutely. So the last chapter is black belt because that's the goal, right? Mastery. Um, and as you get there, you're, you're, you know, you're always kind of training for that. And then when you're there, you're realizing that you're actually stepping into a leadership role, right? In the microcosm of the dojo, but really we're talking about life here. So my, my realization was, oh, I can be a leader, right? At the time I was a personal trainer with my own business in Manhattan and just like going into really wealthy and successful people's homes. Um, you know, I, I thought of leadership. The, the vision I had of it was like men in suits sitting in a boardroom. Right. And I started to realize, Oh, hang on a second. Actually I'm at the dojo every night teaching, leading classes and people start to look up to you. People start to take your words with a little more weight. And I realized that that comes with responsibility and accountability. Um, and I wasn't just helping people perfect their punch or kick. It was more about, hey, maybe this class or maybe my words are going to help them have a better day, leave a bad relationship, ask for the raise that they deserve at work. And that's when I realized that we as black belts um, have a responsibility to give back, to mentor, to teach. And that's really what, at least in my school where I was trained, was all about. Awesome. Cool. And I have one more question I ask everybody that's on the show. And I know you have an awesome answer to this because you are a badass. <laughs> so Jen Cassetta, how do you start your day with a win? Yeah. First thing I do is meditation. Um, I sit and my meditation has different phases, but essentially it starts with deep breathing to calm the nervous system, set myself up for a powerful state for the day, non-reactive if possible. Um, and then I go into gratitude for all the things that I have. And then I go into visualization of the things that I'm creating. I love and this. Awesome. And then coffee. <laughs> oh, there you go. Awesome. Of course, coffee. Jen Cassetta, thank you so much for being on Start With A Win, The Art of Badass. We make sure you check it out on Amazon. Get it pre-ordered. It comes out in August. And uh, for all my friends in the real estate space, Think about your personal safety. Look up Jen. She is truly a badass, has an amazing program. Jen, thank you for being on Start With A Win. Thank you, Adam. Hey, and thank you for listening to Start With A Win. Uh, if you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to the podcast and help us get the word out and reach more people. And if you are ready to take your leadership to the next level, head over to adamcontos.com and sign up for the Leadership Factory. We've got a lot of exciting things coming and you won't want to miss it. So until next time, start with a win. Hey, are we still on YouTube? We're on YouTube. If, you, if you've hung out this long and you've listened to the podcast... You are a hardcore fan, and you get the <laughs> after the show content. The show after the, the show. The show after the show. Jen, welcome uh -oh. to the YouTube segment of our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I didn't realize there was one. Oh, but yeah. Great. It's, it's always, a surprise. It's a surprise, you know? <laughs> so, well, Jen, uh, this has been awesome. I'm so thankful. I love your, your positive energy, and uh, I think this episode is really going to in inspire a lot of people and get them thinking. Uh, a question. Have you ever had to use your martial arts in order to, like, I mean, you live in New it's York. It's not like the robot dance, Mark. Well, I know, but if I was, like, a ninja, you know, I, I might be like, get back. <laughs> uh, the answer is yes. Yes, and okay. I'll explain. Okay, um, yeah, that's what we want. We want the juicy explanation. Right, right. Well, it's it's probably different than when you what you picture. Yeah. Um. A year. So after nine eleven, right? It was almost in the same year. I got mm. grabbed on the street by some creep. Uh, late at night, coming home, I was not paying attention. I was listening to a voicemail right outside my apartment in the East Village, and some guy's hands were like up my dress and grabbing me. So. Right after 9-11, experiencing that freeze response and then mm. doing martial arts for so long, um, I was able to move past that freeze very quickly yes. into the fight. And um, I faced my attacker. I just like flew around. I made myself big, started flailing my arms, using my voice in such a powerful way. I will never repeat what I was actually saying, mm. but it, yeah, the words scary. didn't matter, right? Yeah. It was, 
how I was communicating like this inner mm. beast, like protecting myself like a tiger. Yes. And I just saw his face like go from to like, I just messed there you with go. the wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I better get out of here. <laughs> yeah. And he took off running. So mm. the point was, wow, like after that, I really got even deeper into my martial arts training mm. because I realized that the way I was being, uh, I didn't need the fancy techniques. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, hey, Jen, thanks so much for, for being on the show and thank hanging you. out with us. And hey, thank you so much for watching this podcast on YouTube. Uh, if you've liked this episode, hit that thumbs up icon and the bell icon so you get notified every single time that a new episode drops. And if you haven't already, also subscribe to our channel. We're going to be releasing a lot of uh, other types of content besides just podcast content. we got a lot of great stuff with the Leadership Factory and other things like that, so you won't want to miss out. Until next time, we'll see you when we see you.